This video is just a short extract from the entire course. If you wish to see all of the videos from this series at higher quality and in far larger screen size, head over to ifskills.com. Walls making new types. All right, picking up where we left off. Right there, 709. It's going to be 710 next. So here we are, 710. Begin. Save as. 710. Complete. So we're talking about making new types. Let's just take a look at our overall 3D view. And you might notice if we spin this around that there's something going on over here. It looks like there's a little indent. So what I'd like to do is just go to the discipline and change that to coordination so we can make sure we see everything. So this is a complete architect's model that they sent us. And we can see there, aha, uh -huh, there's more walls there than they've actually defined as structural in their model. So we can see that, yeah, it looks like we need to draw in some retaining wall there. Let's make a retaining wall type and then draw it in over top of this. So let's go to a plan view for this. So top of slab. And again, in order to see it, we're going to want to change our discipline for the time being to coordination and then apply that. Okay, let's also go to our detail level and we'll just change it to medium so it doesn't black out the walls like that. And now we can see, okay, there's the line of where they want that retaining wall. Okay, so we're going to go to home wall. And we could just use a basic wall foundation. There'd be nothing really wrong with that. But what we want to do is actually make our own type, which is going to end up being this sort of retaining wall type specifically. First thing to do, always look for one that's similar to what you might want. Aha, so there's a retaining wall. Let's just click on that. Very similar to the wall we used. Now, what's the difference? Why is this retaining wall any different from the foundation wall? They're both 12 inch concrete. It comes down to how Revit thinks of itself. This wall actually has some settings inside of it that really make it a retaining wall. And if I just click on edit type, you'll notice that in the type properties of this wall, its function is set to retaining. And in analysis and invisibility, that will have an effect down the road. Okay, so let's make our own type. So we've got one to start with. It's called basic wall retaining 12 inch concrete. But maybe we've done some calculations on this and it has to be a little bit thicker all the way through. So let's make a new one. So you click on one to start, then you go to edit type, and then we'll click on duplicate. We don't want to change one that's already made because if we were to change its thickness, we'd lose the 12 inch one. So we want to just duplicate and move on. So we're going to call this one retaining 16 inch concrete. Okay. And under structure, we can click on edit and the thickness. So right here, we're not going to delve into this too deeply right now. If we click on preview, you can see as you change things, this preview will change. This is the wall. It's just sort of in a matrix or in a spreadsheet. So we've got the layers of the wall. This is the outside or the exterior side. This is the interior side. And these are all the layers. And you might have a strapping and you might have finishes on the inside and they can all be inserted using this tool. You can change different things. I want that a finish and then I want to move it up and I want that to be thermal air and I want that up and I want this to be a substrate and I want to move it down and on and on and on. If you don't want ones, you just click on them, hit delete. And I'm going to do that with most of these. So I'll hit delete on all those. Good. So we just want one. We want it to be structure. And you can see here that there's two layers. They don't actually form any thicknesses. They're just telling us where's the core. And the whole thing is a core. It's just one solid structural wall. The material is cast in place concrete. We could change it if we want to just click on that little button. It'll bring up our materials dialog box. And you could choose different concretes if you wanted to. Okay, so we could click on maybe that concrete there. Okay, so every time you click on a material, it's going to update the render material or the render appearance, the shade, any pattern on the surface, and then any pattern when you cut it. Let's just stick with cast in place concrete. We'll say OK. And then the thickness, we wanted to make that 16 inches. You want to specify inches because Revit will think you're talking about feet. 
And if you're in metric, by all means, let's make it 300 millimeters. Okay, so I'll just call it 16 inches, and we'll say OK. And then we'll say OK to that. And we're at the top of slab. That's OK to start. And we're going to draw using depth. Now notice this one, you can actually choose, do I want to go up or down? So do I want to draw from level top of slab going down? Or do I want to draw from level top of slab going up? Okay, now we're getting a little message saying, hey, you've changed something here. You know, we've got to look out for that. So let's just change that back to depth. And it's telling us that it's changing this offset. Okay, so we're going to go depth. We're going to start from where we are, and then we're just going to go down to the top of footing. And of course, we may need to step this. We may need to step other parts of the building. That's something we'll deal with at a later stage. Okay, good. So we've got, there's the depth. There's the top of footing, core face, exterior. We're going to draw using lines. We're going to pick up on O-snaps. So we can just zoom in and just pick up on that corner there. We're using the endpoint. So that's going to be pretty solid wall there, 16 inches. And then we'll go down here. And we can just pick on that point as the end. And then we'll hit Escape. If ever you zoom in and you see there's a discrepancy, just zoom in and you can just bring that perpendicular. Or stretch it out and use the Align tool. So go to Modify, go to Align, and then just align that right up. And I can even align the end if, as long as I can tab through it. OK, so it's not letting me get the end of this one. So we're just going to have to stretch that down right to the end point. There we go. That looks perfect. If we want to, we can go up into the Quick Access Toolbar and just turn on this thing called Thin Lines. And then we can confirm exactly where we are. So Thin Lines determines whether we're showing what we're going to print or not. Regardless, it'll still print with line weights. Good. So always go to 3D and just check out what you did. And we can just even orbit this around. I'll hold down the Shift key and the middle mouse button. And we can take a look and make sure. Now, it looks like we've got a little difference in the tops there. Let's just click on this. Now, it might just be something that we're seeing. Aha. So if you spin that around, it's not a discrepancy in height. It's actually a discrepancy in maybe where I picked. So I'm just going to use the Align tool. I'm going to pick on this front face. So I'm zooming out to confirm that, yes, that is the front face. And then I'll pick the front face or the back face, however you think of it, of that wall. And then it will align into there. Now we're getting a little message saying highlighted walls overlap. One of them may be ignored when Revit finds room boundaries. So let's just hit Escape. So if we click on this wall, we can do that same thing that we did before. So if we just undo, we could click on this wall and maybe just go down to the bottom grip, right click on it and say, disallow join. We could stretch that right into there and then that won't cause any issues, especially if we've split right in the middle of that. Okay, going back to the top of slab view, let's just move back here and then we can confirm where that is. So these are the walls we drew, that one, that one, and this one. And perhaps we want to just drag that back to there, click on this wall, drag the grip back to there, and there we are. So I'll go back to 3D again and just see how those walls are all connecting. Now you see these blue lines here? Those are really not necessary. Let's take those off. Those are the analytical lines. Let's just click on analytical visibility and we'll just uncheck show visibility. We can just spin this right back around to another isometric view. I'm pretty happy with that. We're going to be adjusting the cutoff for that retaining wall as well as our stepped footings and foundation walls as well.